thank you so much for all of these uh, tweets and messages that are coming in right now, including this one from Mr. Badger, who says, um, if you're talking about the foals, get the name right. It's not the foals, it's foals, of which a mistake I, may, I make all the time. And the reason I'm bringing this up right now is I have Tom from Editors sat in front of me right now, yeah. and I know for a fact I would have called you the Editors. Yeah, we get the same thing. Why yeah. did you get rid of the the? We never had the the. But, oh. um, yeah. You know, we don't get angry about it, but it has <laughs> it's something that, that, that you know, that doesn't, hasn't stopped in it's 15 just, years of being editors. It's just a thing. Well, thank you so much, Tom, from Editors, who's with <laughs> me right now. We're going to have your first track in a second. Uh, what time are you playing on stage at the This Is Tomorrow We're Festival? on at six tonight. Six, OK. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're here. Just one man and his guitar. Mm -hmm. um, and just to point out how we've set up this wigwam, I'm sat on a sofa at one end, and you were the other side of it with your guitar. You were a long way away. It is, and it's good, because I sampled some of the catering earlier on, and I've had something very garlicky. Okay. So we've done the right thing. OK. Uh, we're going to chat about the new album that's just come out, which I'm very excited to talk about. First, though, uh, we're going to have a track, and I heard you sound check this a little while ago. It's haunting, this version of it. Is that good or bad? That's good. No, okay, no, it's okay. very, very good. I'm very excited about it. So take it away, please. Okay. <laughs> What do you put them 
beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, for people who are heading maybe... Could we have a round of applause, please? <laughs> Very subdued. Thank you. Um, for people maybe who are heading here, I take it that's going to be in the set this afternoon. Sorry? That's going to be in the set this afternoon. Yeah, we get in trouble if it's not. Oh, yeah. Where'd you put it? Um, it jumps around, because obviously it's a bit of an oldie now, but um, number three or four tonight, I think. Yeah. Uh, 12 years old, I think. Was it 2007 you brought that out? That was before. That would have been 2005, actually. Oh, wow. yeah. So when a song has been in your armory that long, mm -hmm. well, does it become like an old friend? Um, some of them, yeah. I think they, they, there's a, become this point where they kind of belong to the audience more. Certainly the ones that are known, you know, your, your hits for the want of a better word. So, um, you know, that song is really important for us. So I think, yeah, it's nice that it means something to the crowd, you know. Because there are certain bands, when they've had, maybe they've had just one big hit, tend to not want to play them because they, they feel like they've just been tagged by that hit. I'm not saying this is like you at all. I'm saying other bands. Do you, do you <laughs> see that's a bad thing when a band maybe has that big hit and goes, I'm not playing that tonight? Um, I, I guess it depends. I mean, if you've got a lot, I don't know, it depends. I, I can see how the relationship between artists and songs it can be awkward and it can change. You know, you can, one tour, you can say, I'm not playing Creep tonight. Uh, and then, you know, two years later, then it'll get played, you know? So that's a loud tractor, isn't it? It is indeed. I believe it's somebody delivering like... water around the outside <laughs> of us. Shoo them off, will you? Um, how's your 2019 been so far? Because we're at the start of festival season now. Yeah, uh, it's been great. I mean, last year was very busy. We did a lot of shows. We had a record out last year. So this year, it's kind of a little, some bits and pieces happening. So we've been, um, we put out kind of a, an accompanying album to Violence, which is not a remix album, but it's an alternative production um, with a guy called Blank Mass. Well, it's fascinating. That I've not heard of this happening before, mm -hmm. but the way it came about, just talk us through how this came about, because as you said, it's an alternative production yeah. of that album. Essentially, yeah. There is one new song on it, which, which is called Barricades, but um, when we made Violence, we, we, we went for a, for a process, you know, in different stages and... And part of that was getting Ben, who is Blank Mass, involved, and, and, and he helped us a lot. And a lot of his production ideas ended up on violence, but some of them didn't. And we ended up going with a different producer, and it became something slightly different. But I, I think we thought that fans would like to hear, you know, wh what the record went through, you know. Was this a plan beforehand? Or no. was it just how it came about? No, it's how it, yeah, it kind of evolved. And, um, yeah, I just think... We love what he does, and I think it was important to let people hear it properly, you know. Did he go away and do it on his own, or did you have any input into this Black Mass Sessions, which is out now? His stuff was done remote, so, you know, we, would, we were working in Oxford in the studio recording ourselves. We'd send him all of what we were doing, and then he would then kind of, yeah, um, kind of restart the songs and put them in together in a different way with different sounds and stuff, and it was all brilliant, but some of it was too much of a stretch from what we do, I think, and, um, yeah. So what did you do? Did he send you it over and you sat down with the rest of the band yep. and went, oh, OK. Yeah. That was yeah. it. I mean... When some, some days it was like, you know, jaw dropping. Like with the song Barricades, for example, we were just absolutely blown away by, you know, it was just, I think it's one of the best things we've done. And, and then some of the songs were like, well, I like that of what he's done and not that, that not so much, you know. And yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, you mentioned you work in Oxford. I was trying to work out, are you a Birmingham band? Um, would you class are. yourself as a Birmingham I band? I would, yeah. I mean, none, um, only Russell, our bass player, is originally from Birmingham, but we moved there when we were getting a record deal and we were there for three or four years in that kind of... when we were born as, a, as, a, as editors, you know, so... And um, Birmingham thinks of us as a Birmingham band, which is the important thing. Is that the hometown show? Yeah. That is the hometown show, because I was trying to work out where you come on the list of Birmingham bands now. So I want you to tell me whether <laughs> you're above or below What's these. What's the list? Just... OK. It's just I'm making it up here. OK. Uh, Black Sabbath. Are we what? Above or below them? What's the list? What's the, the what? list is of uh, of all time bands from Birmingham. Yeah, so if we're above it, we're better than them. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Then more, no, more renowned. Let's go more renowned. More renowned. Then more renowned. No, we're below them, yeah. Okay, Duran Duran. Below them. Fine Young Cannibals. Ooh. We're getting lots of people pointing upwards. <laughs> it's, uh, okay, <laughs> it's a yeah. difficult thing, isn't it? Well, yeah, UB40. Well, it's slightly egotistical. Um, UB40. Yeah. Uh, no, they were above. They were above. Yeah. Us. Musical yeah. Youth. Oh, but we're above that. <laughs> uh, right, we're going to have one more <laughs> song that you play in a second. Talk me through this song that you're going to play and the story behind it. Uh, well, this song is, I think it was the first single from the second album, so it's called Smokers Outside the Hospital Doors, and um, 
Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of this big, kind of grand, sad song that um, I don't know was quite important for us, like Munich was. Those two songs, I think, really. We, this year we're pushing towards doing a greatest hit, so that's going to be at the end of the year. So it's been quite nice to go through all of our singles and kind of think about them. And this was a very important one. Yeah. When you started out, how long into your career did you think the greatest hits would be? Um, I think after six records, it's okay. Uh, um, I didn't really think about it. But did you not? No, no. So it, do, you, do you think in the history of a band there has to be a certain point you get to when you can think, okay, we're fine now for greatest hits? Some people are a bit funny about it. Some people like, turn their noses up at it. I, I, um, I, I don't, yeah, I'm pretty cool with it. I used, I used to love the James um, best of, you know, uh, uh, and what's the Alan Partridge quote about the Beatles? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with, with best ofs, you know. I think everyone loves a best of every yeah. now and again. Will you be, when it comes out, um, will it be an album that you will hand around to people or will you tell them to go back and look at the back catalogue first and then get the greatest hits later on? Well, no, because, you know, what's exciting for us is when we're doing this, we've been doing new songs to go with it. So with, with everything, there's always something new to, to fuel the fire, you know. So um, that kind of, if there was any um, reticence about the nostalgia, you know, um, the having new material is, is exciting for us. Well, Tom, it's been great to chat to you. Thank you so much for coming and doing this session. Thank I know you you're going to be amazing on stage. I'm going to come and try and catch it after we finish this show. Please take it away.
Beautiful. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been amazing. Thank you. Uh, Tom Smith of Editors there. Uh, let's continue with the music now, Radio 2. This is The Madonna.